The Center for Public Accountability, CPA, is an organization that is focused on ensuring that public office holders and processes are accountable and can be trusted. Now, to this end, they are consistently monitoring all government processes and engagement. It is on this basis of their core value at the CPA that they are writing to the office of the president to demand an immediate stoppage of the recruitment process of the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation and ordering a review of the process before a final decision is made or taken. They are calling for this stoppage because they are aware that they have obtained documents that have shown that the current process that is planned to be concluded on Thursday the 11th of May, that's today, is filled with irregularities and that the outcome cannot be trusted. Well, joining us to speak on this is Olufemi Lawson. He's a development expert, a media entrepreneur and a pro-democracy activist. Thank you so much for joining us. He's also the uh, national auditor uh, of the Campaign for Democracy and Convener Yoruba Stakeholders Summit. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Yes, walk us through how you got these so-called um, information that is showing that this process of recruiting um, the Auditor General, which is a civil service procedure, um, is not done properly? Well, I say thank you once again. The problem here is that, uh, you know, most times as Nigerians, we find it difficult, you know, showing interest in what happened around us, despite the implication that some of the policies and decisions of government have on us as citizens. The process of recruitment in the public service is not a secret you know, process. Ordinarily, it should be as transparent as possible because it is a public sector. And Nigerians must be interested at all times in what happens in recruitment process, in promotions, because as people move upward in the civil service, windows are open for younger people to come into the process, for people to get promoted, and of course, increasing productivity as the case may be, you know, in the civil service. But, you know, we have a situation whereby virtually everything in the country today has become so politicized to the extent that merit is becoming daily thrown into the dustbin. And as Nigerians, we should be concerned. Our concern in the current, you know, recruitment process of the, uh, the new Auditor General of the Federation is such that uh, you know we are really, we are really bothered with the procedures that have been undertaken. This has been on for almost two years, and you see, it's a question of what is obtainable, what is the ethic as far as the civil service rule is concerned. Today we have a situation where people are trying to rewrite illegally the procedures for promotion in the civil service. We have a situation whereby people are trying to you know, politicize what ordinarily should be positions where you are qualified to occupy by the virtue of your years in service. But today, you know, every due process has been negated, particularly in the recruitment process of the Office of the Auditor General. The most worrisome aspect of this is the tendency for corruption in this recruitment process because the anti-graft agencies in the country are involved whenever this kind of you know very crucial or strategic offices are to be occupied by anyone. But today you find people in authority who are trying to even you know undermine the position of the anti-corruption agencies, particularly the ICPC, in appointing you know a new auditor general for the federation. And that's why we are raising this alarm that it, we, should we allow every institution to become so politicized to the extent that we can no longer have people in position on the basis of merit, on the basis of their qualification, on the basis of the ethics, and of course the lay down rule of the civil service or whatever profession as the case may be. When you talk about politicizing the process, it, it makes me really wonder because right before me, I can see the procedure in which these people uh, are being recruited. As at, um, I think, um, 2022, the president had a approved the recruitment of a new Auditor General. And, um, and I also know, it is public knowledge, that officers who were off, um, undergoing disciplinary measures were uh, excluded from the process. But I'm, I'm most interested in you saying that you're 
pushing for marriage because there are people who are trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, what are you canvassing for? Are you canvassing for marriage here or do you have a personal interest? No, no, no personal interest in this. Marriage is the issue and due process, like I said earlier. There has been a pro the process of selection has been hung. What you saw, what you refer to as the event of today, May 11, is another attempt at, you know, employing two shortcuts, you know, or boycotting the earlier, you know, stated rules, the earlier taking procedures in the appointment of a new Auditor General. Before now, there have been a, you know, candidates who have been shortlisted on the basis of seniority. You know, you cannot undermine the role, the place of seniority as far as the civil service is concerned. It is not enough to go and bring somebody from behind to you know, come occupy a position when people who have years ahead of such person in the service are still very actively involved in the service. The process had been earlier conducted. People were shortlisted, five persons precisely. They faced, you know, all sort of uh, uh, the panel, the wrote exams, the had interviews. They even went through screening properly by the anti-corruption agency. And it is also in the public that ICPC made recommendations mm -hmm. as to who is qualified on the basis of their integrity and, of course, the assessment for this position. But suddenly, because some people within the service are uncomfortable, most likely, with the people who are deemed to have been qualified or who have been recommended by the virtue of the, the original screening, which was duly you know, undertaken by the same civil service commission, have now come up. Why those people are still in active service? To initiate another process of recruitment for the same position, while nothing as a decision has been taken on the outcome of the previous assessment, which is which which remains valid today, not statement from the head of office of data service of the Federal Civil Service Commission had cancelled the earlier process undertaken. Then what is the basis for this new process bringing eleven people to come and undertake the same process that have been undertaken by those five earlier shortlisted. And these people you are bringing, how well, many of them really have up to two years, you know, in, in, in service as we speak mm -hmm. to occupy such position. So these are issues of people trying to sideline the rule, you know, and probably bringing favoritism into the whole process of selection of an office that should be occupied by people who, are, who only merited it. Looking at this letter that was written and sent, um, addressed to the office of the president, um, I see that um, you have indicted the head of service. You have indicted seven people who work in the service. You've also given a report by the ICPC. And I see here the names of the five people that um, you've made reference to, Mr. Isukuku, Julius Michael, Mrs. Ogundowo, Adeoti Olushei. I also see Mrs. Ugu Ngozi Ukeria. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Omudili Ogochuku and Mr. Bayan Shiru Gabriel. These are the five that you make mention of initially, yes. but now you're accusing the head of service of 11 new people who are being um, auditioned or rather interviewed for the same so office. The that have never been undertaken. So, and what is the basis for this new you know, procedure when there has not been any decision taken on the previous? You know, well conducted process that has given you know birth to a recommendation, like you could see in our letter, you know, by the ICPC recommending you know restating its findings mm -hmm. about the persons you know that were earlier nominated. You don't just you know make a system go through such process screening or writing text, you know, going through computer based tests and all sort of exercises only for you to get to a point and now initiate a new process, especially come, you know, come bringing people who in most cases are not even qualified to come and undergo a new process for the same procedure where institutions that are concerned are taking decision and you have refused to act upon it. Again, as the CPA, um, uh, have you gone to the Office of the Head of Service, this same letter, that you have sent to Mr. President, have you gone um, asking all of these questions? Have you inquired as to why these new 11 people 
have been brought for the same interview that five people had already been interviewed for and shortlisted for that office. I mean, of course, um, like you said, it's an issue of merit and whoever is picked would be picked from those five. But like I said earlier on, those who, according to Mr. President's um, report or rather statement, those who were undergoing disciplinary measures were left out of this. Could any of this five have been one of those or linked to um, the, the, the scam that had happened before the uh, Auditor General, the erstwhile Auditor General, uh, was taken out of office? Could they have been linked to it? What, what groundwork have you done in terms of asking all of these questions as opposed to being here? Well, first and foremost, we have made contact, we have, of course, copied the Office of the Head of Service with the letters submitted to the President. We have sent to the National Assembly because even on this same issue, the National Assembly has directed a suspension of that process. But as we speak, some persons within the Federal Civil Service Commission and the Office of the Head of Service, as the case may be, have been deviant and are consciously disobeying the position of the National Assembly, asking that the process be put on hold and are going ahead with what you saw today you know, in that our letter. And beyond that, we have also copied other stakeholders who may be interested in ensuring that the law and order you know, are followed as far as uh, the recruitment process is concerned. So we have not only written the president, we have you know, sent this letter to every necessary quarter in the National Assembly, of course, and every institution that are concerned. And on the basis of the merit, just like you said, we are not particularly interested in, an, in any individual you know, coming to be the Auditor General of the Federation. But we must, as a country, be sincere with ourselves for once that when people, you know, are taken through a process, when people are recommended or when positions are taken on the integrity and character of people who want to occupy public positions, such must be taken seriously, especially if such are recommendations coming from institutions like the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, which has made its recommendation clear on this process. This is not enough for some people to sit in the comfort of their, of their offices and begin to you know, undermine this kind of uh, the, the positions already taken by qualified institutions of, uh, of our country in, because of selfish ambition of individuals. I see some of the recommendations that you um, have made here uh, asking for the current recruitment process of the office uh, to be put on hold. But as we speak, today is the last day for that recruitment process. Today is the 11th. Um, so what exactly do you think can be done? And with Mr. President not being in the country, as we all know, um, how do you expect that something would take a turn? If, as you have said, there are people uh, in certain positions that are trying to skew the process, um, what are you hoping for? Well, the, even in the absence of the president in, in the country, the president is very much active as the president of the country. He can work from wherever he is, anywhere in the world, just like we have been made to know. And uh, it, it is not only the president that is concerned or that is involved in this. Like we said, the National Assembly has taken a position on this, which was irrespected. The other institutions that are concerned have made recommendations on this. This must be respected. And we are also using this opportunity to call on the presidency, not only President Muhammad Bari, to ensure that this illegality that is going on in the you know, recruitment of the, of the new Auditor General of the Federation is quickly addressed so that you know, we don't begin to set, set landmine for the incoming administration whenever they come. Because if this becomes the norm, we have seen so many institutions today where you know, people are overstaying their time in office just because someone somewhere is giving them this level of confidence and is disregarding you know, the procedure, disregarding the rules of civil service, as the case may be. And this is not, not only going to be counterproductive to us as a nation, it's dampen the morale of people who are younger officers, who are in the lower cadres of the civil service. You cannot continue to you know, use individual selfish ambitions to undermine the institutions of our of our, of our democracy and our interests of our country. Okay. Let me, uh, because there are those who would say that this is something that mostly happens or goes unnoticed uh, in the civil service, being that there are people who are 
you know, have powers, just as you said. Um, why does this case, um, why is this case so interesting to the CPA as opposed to other people who have, um, I mean, for example, in the army um, and in the force, we see people who are not supposed to be holding certain positions holding it, but then we don't see the CPA uh, screaming blue murder on their behalf. Why now? Why this? So that's not that totally correct. If you have followed our activities, only recently we have led series of protests and agitation over the continued stay of the Acting Controller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, whose tenure had expired April 22nd last year. President Muhammad Wabari graciously extended it for another one year, which expired again on the 23rd of April you know, this year. But the man has continued to stay in office. So we have raised alarm not only on this, but on several other institutions where people are fragrantly abusing you know, our laws. And we will not stop at this. This is just one of the many cases. As I speak to you, we are, pro we are already in court over some of these issues. So we are, this agitation is not limited to what is currently happening in this recruitment process, but rather, holistically, we take a look at what happens across the institution of government, most, impo most importantly, because of our concern as Nigerians, because of our interest in our democracy, we cannot continue to allow a very few, very, very few people to continue to undermine our institutions for purely selfish, you know, pers you know political interests or whatever the case may be, like we're currently witnessing. Mm. Well, I want to say thank you, Olufemi Lawson, for speaking with us on this issue. We're going to, we're going to keep our eyes on this story and see what the outcome is. And uh, thank My you for doing what you do. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. All right. And that's the show tonight. We want to thank you all for watching. Now, if you want to play catch up on all of our different episodes of the program, please go to Plus TV Africa on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and follow all of our programs. I am Mary Anakun. Do have a good evening. <laughs>